very last part now of vectors is just a couple of slides that we've got here. And it's to do with modeling. Now, we've talked about modeling before. We talked about modeling with quadratics and how we said, what were some of the real life things we modeled with quadratics? Any examples? What was that, sorry? The cave. Oh, yeah, we modeled like the roof of the cave, like the journey into the tunnel. What else have we modeled with a quadratic? Shooting a bow and arrow, a rugby ball. OK, then we did some linear modeling. Can you remember anything we did with linear modeling, what we modeled? Yeah, there was a supply, a supply and demand, like straight lines. Do you remember any of the examples that we did on the board? We had two examples. I had some like clip art that went with them. We talked about Fahrenheit and Celsius. That was a linear model. The height of a plant, we said, could have been maybe a linear model. And the other one we looked at was water leaking out of a tank. Maybe that would have been linear, but we also decided it might not be linear. Anyway, we can do modeling with vectors as well. And it's going to be, it says in mechanics, you will see that certain things can be represented as a simple number without direction or as a vector with direction. So we have two different things. We either have the vector quantity or the equivalent scalar quantity. Now, a scalar, it says in my orange box up there, a scalar just means a normal number in the context of vectors. Um, and it can be obtained using the magnitude of the vector. So if you want to find out the scalar version of a vector, you take the magnitude of it, and it becomes that scalar version. So the vector quantity, we would say, is velocity, which we might say here is 3, 4 kilometers per hour. That means every hour it is moving three kilometers to the right, four kilometers up. So overall, it's making that kind of diagonal sort of motion. The speed, though, we would do the magnitude of 3, 4, which would be 3 squared plus 4 squared, square rooted, which we know is 5. The speed is just 5 kilometers per hour. So speed is a scalar quantity that does not have direction. Velocity is a vector quantity that does have direction. This is going to be a really important difference between two words that we've got at the bottom here. You've probably come across these, but maybe haven't understood the subtleties of the differences between them. Displacement is how something has been displaced, how something has been moved, and it does have direction. So this one has been moved minus 5, 12 kilometers. That means it's been moved 5 kilometers to the left or to the right? To the left, and it's been moved 12 kilometers up. The distance that it moved overall, because it went 5 to the left and 12 up, the overall distance that it moved is Pythagoras of that. So we've got our 5, 12, 5 squared plus 12 squared square rooted is 13. So if I use the word distance, I'm talking about scalar. I'm talking about the fact you may need to have done the magnitude to that. If I'm talking about displacement, I'm talking about vectors. And I want to see your answer as a vector type of quantity instead. Just going to have a look at doing one question like this together. It says here, find the distance moved by a particle which travels for these different things. I'm going to do part A, and then you're going to do part B, C, and D for me. And you're going to look really carefully at the units. So in part A, it says, find the distance moved. So is it asking for a vector answer or for a scalar answer? Good, it's asking for a scalar answer. But I've been told the velocity. So I've been told that the velocity is 8, 6. So if I want to find out the speed, I will take the magnitude of that, which is the square root of 8 squared plus 6 squared, which ends up as being 10. So I know that this kilometers per hour is 10 kilometers per hour. And the distance, well, it's been going for five hours. So I know that distance equals speed. In this case, it's our magnitude of the velocity times time. So the distance is 10 times 5, or 50 kilometers. You need to very carefully look at B, C, and D. You can talk to each other about these. I don't think they're going to take you very long. Careful about the units. OK, this one is in seconds and meters per second. So that's just that's fine. OK, this one is in minutes, but in kilo kilometers per hour. So you might need to think about what are you going to do to your 45 minutes. And this one is in minutes, but it's in centimeters per second. So you might need to think about what you're going to do to the minutes units that you've got here. OK, 
main thing you're going to need to do, change the speeds, sorry, change the velocities to speeds, and then it just becomes a GCSE style question. I'm going to give you just two or three minutes to answer those three questions. Off you go.